Howdy everybody and welcome to Andy's Knowledge Report with your host, Captain Andy Nolch, the naughty space cowboy. These are secret closed door briefings on vital information about Scientology and the world that you need to know because there have been so many things that uh, there have been so many lies that you've been told that it takes years of investigation to work out what really is going on. For example, the Vietnam War. Why did it really happen? Well, there are numerous reasons why, but one of them was actually to protect the uh, cocaine, no, I don't know, cocaine, no, it was probably the heroin trade in the Golden Triangle area, uh, southern area of Vietnam, uh, near Cambodia and all that sort of stuff. It was to protect the CIA's drug dealing operations that they had going there. Um, seriously, I mean, there's just, that's just one, one thing. Another thing is that it's quite possible that the government created the AIDS disease, like a secret depart, secret part of the government. Apparently it might have even been the Navy. Um, but, I mean, that's just another thing where it's just like there's so, so many things. And in order to find out what's going on, you have to spend years and years studying. And a lot of people, they don't have the time to put in to find these things out, whether they're just doing Scientology all the time um, or they're busy working their WOG job all the time or they're busy looking after children all the time um, or they've been distracted by some of the games in life like computer games or sports or hobby airplanes or something and they just, they just don't have the time to find out these things. Well, I have the time to find out these things. I've specifically chosen a job that allows me to study while I'm working. So it's actually really good because I'm getting paid to listen to stuff that I would do, that I would listen to for free. Um, it's actually really clever and it's the reason why I've remained in the same job for years now um, because I just churn through intel while I'm working and it's fantastic. So I guess these knowledge reports, these secret briefings, uh, me saying, hold on a second, I've found out stuff, I have an obsession with finding out the truth and I've got to tell you guys what's going on and I don't expect you to believe me because you shouldn't really do that. You should find out things for yourself. But I'm going to tell you what the truth is so it helps you so it helps you to look, find out the truth so you're not as confused because finding out the truth can be really hard. Like me, for example, telling you that the moon landings were faked, the footage was faked, but they actually did go to the moon they did, and they did a big secret mission and NASA does lots of secret missions all the time right me telling you that now no now when you go and you investigate did they really go to the moon knowing that after i've told you it it would make your investigation a lot easier because you'll be able to think in your mind okay so andy said that they actually did go to the moon but the footage was fake and then you look and you spot for signs the footage is fake and then when you hear people argue and say they didn't go to the moon at all you know that that's just silly and like you can see the evidence for that and things make sense so that's why i'm, I'm doing this because i know people don't have the time um to look into all these things that that I have, and uh, so it's good to tell you guys information to help you. Now, did I even mention? Like, or I, well, anyway, today's knowledge report is all about how Scientology is 
a science. Um, it's a science turned into a religion. The reason this is on my mind is because I've been listening to stuff by Richard Dawkins recently, and I used to not like the guy because he's against spiritual stuff and things like that. Um, but then I started to listen to his stuff, and he's actually quite a funny guy, um, and he's really honest. Like He speaks his mind. He genuinely thinks that religions are bad because they stuff up with they stuff up people's ability to reason and I was like yeah 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 and I was I was just like yeah I pretty much agree with what Richard Dawkins has to say and I was like but I'm a Scientologist and I am religious so why is there doesn't that make no sense but it does make sense okay because Scientology is so different to the other religions it's not like Islam it's not like Christianity it's not like Judaism okay it is very different it's basically a science turned into a religion and that's why I originally got into it because I can't just believe in anything and I think a lot of people are the same they can't just believe in anything you know what I mean and it's kind of weird when you get brought up in other religions you get told things and some people gobble it up and they love their Christianity or whatever and then they grow up and they're fine with it, but I think there are a lot of people that are like me and that are like Richard Dawkins where you're like, well, that doesn't make sense. So you're like, well, where's the evidence? I can't believe that until there's the evidence. But then I came across Scientology, and firstly, the name is good in itself. It's Scientology. It's like re science, religion of science. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a good – and that's what it is. That's really what it is because it's not just some – it's not just things that you – um that you're required to believe because of faith or anything. It's just facts. That's what it is. And I think that anyone who's um, an atheist or a fan of Richard Dawkins should actually look into Scientology and try it and not listen to the bullshit wacky stuff on the internet and the, the, the out there stories about um, aliens or whatever that you might hear on the internet. I know atheists would totally freak out at that. What I'm saying is you actually yourself actually pick up a Scientology book and read it. You actually go into a Scientology center and try it out for yourself and you will see how it's very, very different to the, uh, the main religions. And by the way, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism are all almost the same religion. Like they're all just different flavors of the same central thing it's like an, they're all like they're called abrahamic religions they all come from the same story they all come from the middle east you know we're not hearing about the ancient greeks religion or the ancient swedish people's religion or ancient chinese this is where when you're looking at christianity islam and judaism you're really looking at just jewish history pretty much like it's like there's all these, all these things in the world. There's Aboriginal Australians, there's Japanese, there's, there's the, the Jewish history, then there's the Greek history, and then Swedish history, and they've got their stories about Thor or whatever. And then you've got the pagan stories from England or whatever, and then you've got some African Zubu Barway stories, right? But all of them seem to have gotten forgotten about except the ones coming from the Middle East where Jerusalem is and stuff, those, that, those ones, those little history stories or whatever, they're the ones that got real popular and now everyone's believing them. And it's kind of silly because it's like you've got Germanic peoples that are believing in the history of some Middle Eastern thing. It's like why aren't they believing in something from the Aboriginal – why aren't they believing the Aboriginal creation myths? Do you know what I mean? It's like – those three religions, they just became, they just got to be the popular ones and stuff, but it's just like there are all these wild out there stories and religions from other cultures that have just been forgotten about and didn't win in the battle of dominant religions. But anyone could believe in any, any one of them, really. Um, anyway, and, and they're all similar, like they're all... Yeah, they're, they're all sort of coming. They all, they all share similar prophets. The Jewish people, they don't believe that Jesus was a special 
prophet. And then the Islam people think that Muhammad, who came after Jesus, was a, was a big special guy, so they praise Muhammad. And it's just, it's just different versions of the same, you know, sort of thing. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd mention that, but for, for whatever reason, they got to be the popular ones. But um, when I first came across Scientology, um, it was different because it was like you're not required to believe in anything. It's just like Scientology is like something that you do. And then Elrin Hubbard says things and you look out in the real world and you can see it. So he'll just... It's just a scientific stud class, basically. It's just, it's like a subject of life. You know what I mean? Like, do you know how you go to school and they've got math, science, history, English? What if they had a subject that was just called life, life ed, basically? And I know that they've got like health ed or life ed and they teach people how to use condoms or whatever. And nowadays it's been taken over by the left and it's been perverted and it's teaching kids um, how to be gay and it's, uh, it's actually teaching kids to be trannies and stuff. So they weren't doing that when I was at school. <laughs> But they were, we were, I remember we put condoms on bananas. Um, it's so silly. I mean, out of all subjects, the last one you ever need to teach is sex because it's like programmed in our DNA. You know, I mean, you don't need to teach Andy about sex. I mean, all you need to do is put me in class with a hot teacher and I can completely work out sex you know, pretty quickly, you know what I mean? I, I, I had it worked out before I'd even done it, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that, this is just the truth. It's just funny. It's just like, yeah, we really need to teach them. But I think that was more they want to teach people how to have safe ed and safe sex and not get pregnant as a part of the depopulation program because there's a massive depopulation program going on across the Western world. They want everyone using condoms and not having sex and not making babies and they want the women sterile and the men with low semen counts and all this sort of stuff. And, it, and it's quite successful. They've gotten us down. The birth rate was like, you know what it was like 80 years ago. It was like on average each, each woman was having five kids. Now they've got it to down to below two kids. I mean, that's a massive change. You know what I mean? You these fam these families, these great our great great grandparents or great 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 grandparents, they were having like eight kid families. I mean the women a proper family and the woman's body is designed to pump out like on average six kids. They're supposed to make six kids. Whereas nowadays, it's like people are struggling with two kids because everyone's so screwed up because of the corruption in the world and these depopulation agendas. But anyway, I'm going totally off topic, right? But people need to know this. People don't know history. I've looked into it, okay? People stop and think, hold on a second. Why aren't women having seven kids anymore? Like they're, they're, they're only having two kids. And why are people, when they're having two kids, poor, whereas they were having four kids in the 60s and they were wealthy, like they actually owned their house and they actually owned their car? Anyway, there's all these reasons for these things. Anyway, it would be really cool to go back to the 60s. Um, so... So anyway, so at school they had the like the life ed class or whatever, and it was teaching people how to put condoms on bananas, right? But and it was probably, I mean, see, I can't even remember what life ed was teaching. That's how lame whatever it was, was they were teaching was. I'm trying to think. Or oh, drugs. They teach you about drugs, and that's a whole other story. They were basically teaching. Anyway, it's quite possible that they were teaching people not to take drugs because they knew that when you tell kids not to do something, they do the opposite. Um, it's like saying, oh, here, I've got a cookie jar here. Don't eat it. Don't eat the cookies. Don't eat the cookies. And you put it down like that. And the next minute, the teenagers are taking drugs and stuff. So like the, the last thing you do is you don't, 
tell them about drugs, teach them about drugs, and then say, don't do it. While on TV, there's all these thing I was showing drugs to be cool and stuff. It makes you think, oh, drugs are like this bad boy cool thing. Why do people want to do drugs and why are the teachers saying not do it? I wonder what drugs are. You know what I mean? It just makes you want to do drugs. It's so ridiculous. And none of them, I never had any teacher tell me just the truth about drugs, which is that, look, they're pretty shit. Like, they're pretty shit. And some people actually do like them. And some people like them so much that they get addicted to them and it full on destroys their life and their family member's life and they're a slave for the rest of their life to the drugs. Like I could, I could become a teacher and I could tell kids the real badness of drugs and warn them and just say, look, I'm, this is just, this is brutal stuff. And anyway, so if they, imagine if these life ed classes, right, actually told you good information about life. That's what Scientology is. That's what it is. Okay. It's like the tone scale, right? In Scientology, you learn how people are stuck in different emotions. And when you know what those emotions are, you can see someone who's stuck in that emotion and then you know whether or not you can trust them or you know whether or not they're going to be healthy or you know you just know certain things um you know if they're good to be friends with and and, and it's just really useful right I, don't, I think i've done a whole video on the tone scale i've got more ones you can certain professions tend to be certain tones right anyway it's just really useful information it's just like yeah this is great and then other information about like how your mind works that's really useful, like Dianetics, like how things in the past, you can get reminded of them and then it can make you stressed now because you're reminded of something that, that occurred to you when you were three years old or whatever. And then you go, oh, okay, so maybe that's why I felt stressed when I was walking down the street the other day or something like that. And it really makes sense and it's fantastic information about life. That's what Scientology is. I remember when I was... When I, maybe when I finished high school or when I was in high school, I thought, I think I thought maybe a lot of these subjects are kind of useless. And I thought, why don't we have subjects that are like practical things that actually teach you about life? And then I came across Scientology and I was like, yes, this is what Scientology is. Like, this is what they should have. They should have a subject at school that is Scientology and it teaches you this information that can help you and make your life a whole lot better. So... From Richard Dawkins' point of view, who's anti-religion, I don't even think he knows anything about Scientology, right? Um, but he could actually he could actually handle that. And I was similar. I was a skeptic when I first came across Scientology and stuff. I was a skeptic. But because I'm not told to believe in anything, and I, um, it's just information, and they can fact-check the information in the universe, you know, I could say, hey, yeah, I agree with this, and, and yeah, this is a good religion, yeah. I thought, hey, I can believe in this, yeah, I can't believe in these wild stories from the Bible and stuff. Like, I mean, how can you believe in, for example, there's some line in, in Islam where it talks about Muhammad flying away on a horse with wings or something. Like, how can you believe that? I mean, it's just like, what the hell? And, and Richard Dawkins, he's talking to someone who's a Muslim, and he goes, do you actually believe that? And the Muslim goes, yeah. And, and Richard Dawkins was just like, what? what the hell? How the hell do you believe that? You know what I mean? I actually, this is a whole other story, but I believe it now. I can actually start understanding these ancient stories from the past because now I know about UFOs and the aliens and who, how these religions really started. And now I understand the primitive people back in those times would mistake a UFO for a horse with wings. And they would say, oh, he went away on the, the flying horse because they, they transported themselves around with horses. So if they see something moving in the sky, they go, oh, that's just like a, a horse that can fly. It's a flying horse. So now I can understand how their stories make sense. But it takes a lot of study. Richard Dawkins doesn't know about any of this stuff. He doesn't know about the UFO stories or anything, right? And he's clearly got a surf hack on 
what he can believe. He's just obsessed with just the physical universe. So it's keeping him dumbed down. But overall, he's actually a good guy. He means well. He wants. He doesn't like how people just believe what they're being told with their religions. He, he doesn't like that bullshit faith. He wants people to have evidence. And I'm exactly the same. The way I approach Scientology, how I got into it was totally evidence-based. I don't want people to just believe random shit by faith. You know what I mean? Like, it's all fucking evidence. It's all scientific. That's what this religion is. That's why Scientology is so good, because it's just like, no, fact, fact check that stuff. You know what I mean? Look into it, you know? Don't just, like, when you do a process or whatever, don't worry if you, if you, if you don't think the process is going to work or whatever. Do the process and see what happens. You don't have to have faith or belief or any stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just practical common sense. Um, anyway, so... So, like, that's why it's called Scientology. You know what I mean? It's science, like, made into religion. It's a fantastic name. And I think it's the, the best religion going around. And I think it people really need it. And I think it can really help people to think for themselves um, and not just believe random stories in the Bible and not... When you've got people who can believe these sorts of things, they're easily manipulated because they just, they obviously believe the shit about climate change or even though there are a lot of people, actually religious people who don't believe in that. But anyway, they can believe other things because they're, they've, and this is what Richard Dawkins doesn't like, is that he just doesn't like how they believe stuff without evidence. I mean, how the hell can you believe anything without evidence? I don't, all the stuff I talk about in all these videos, I know they're completely wild out their stuff about ghosts, about their stuff about aliens. But the only reason I believe any of that is because they're, I've investigated them and I've found evidence that says, no, this stuff is, what, is what's going on. You know what I mean? I know it sounds completely wild to say that the moon might be made of metal. Okay, I know that sounds completely wild, okay, but there's some evidence indicating that, you know what I mean? And, you know, you can't just tell me that a spaghetti monster exists or that there's some ooga boogie in the sky. I'm not going to believe it, okay? You, you can try and con me, you can try and send me fake information, I won't believe it, but when I hear something and it makes sense and other people have other information that they say... The, the back it up, I start going, nah, I know this sounds completely nutty, but look, the moon might be made of metal. Serious, deep underneath the freaking dust that's got covering it, you know? I'm not going to bother saying the reasons why, you know what I mean? You can look into it yourself if you want. But I know that someone like Richard Dawkins would hear me say something like the moon landings were fake or the the metal moon or whatever, or the alien thing, and he'll go, oh, pixies, fairies, all made up. You, you just believe in, like, the horse flying in the sky and God and all this ridiculous stuff. And it's just like, no, 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 no. My, my belief in these things comes from serious looking into evidence. And it's just like, you have to see the evidence that I've seen. Richard Dawkins would completely change his atheist beliefs and his belief in all this his, his non-belief in all the spiritual stuff, if he just saw a ghost. If he saw a ghost or if he looked up in the sky and saw a UFO, he would go, whoa, hold on a second. And this is what needs to happen to Chris Shelton. I said it, I, I said it maybe in a message to him or something. I said to Chris Shelton, I go, you just need to see something that will change your opinion about all these things. He hasn't full-on seen a ghost. He hasn't full-on seen a UFO. And until he does, then he's never going to be able to believe in any of my stuff. And you know what? He, he probably shouldn't, to be honest. Because you shouldn't just believe in things without evidence. You know what I mean? And people shouldn't believe the stuff I'm saying in my videos and if they've seen evidence to back up what I'm saying. Otherwise, you then just think you should think it's don't think it's ridiculous because you should be open to new ideas and stuff. But just say I don't believe that. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway, 
So, um, yeah, I just wanted to explain how if you're into science and if you can't believe in these other religions, then try out Scientology because it's, uh, it's pretty cool, you know, and it's something that you can believe in, you know, and you don't even need to believe in it. You just know it's true, you know, like you, like personally, to be honest, I know some people say they know past lives exist. But look, to be honest, I believe past lives exist. I haven't seen personal hardcore enough evidence for me to say I know past lives exist. But it's it's look, it's it's pretty likely. You know what I mean? So it's like in Scientology, yeah, you'll hear some stuff about aliens or past lives or whatever. So at the start, you don't have to believe into it, but I'm just saying just keep on doing Scientology, keep on improving, and you'll end up finding out the truth about these things. Except maybe except maybe the past life stuff. Because I think you can, you can really find out the truth about the UFOs and the aliens. You really can. But the past life stuff is like how are you going to actually have physical evidence for that? You know what I mean? I know some people have, like, accessed their past life and they just stayed, they know, like, they just know. It's like they don't have evidence for it, but they know. And they said it's kind of like when you, um, like, if you think right now what you had for breakfast, right, do you really have evidence of what you had for breakfast? Do you have footage of what, of you eating breakfast and someone else there who saw you that can back it up to really prove what you ate breakfast? Or is that really, you just really have a memory of what you had for breakfast, right? Well, that, and, well, you're really certain you know what you had for breakfast, right? Hopefully your memory's good enough to remember what you had for breakfast this morning. But um, you might not have any evidence for that, but you know, you're just like, no, I know I had Wheaties or whatever. You're like, I had Wheaties, you know what I mean? And you're like, yes, okay, I can't prove it in a court of law. I don't have a videotape. I don't have anyone else who saw me, but I had Wheaties, right? You're certain of it. Well, apparently when people properly access their past life, that's what it's like for them. They're like, yes, I know I can't prove this in a court of law. I know I don't have physical evidence for this, but I know that this is who I was in my past life. Apparently that's what it's like. And that's pretty cool. But for me personally, maybe I haven't accessed enough of my past lives yet yet and stuff. Um, but I am a skeptic. I am literally like Richard Dawkins. Like seriously, I need evidence to believe, like to, I need evidence to know that something's true. So at the moment, I just believe that past lives exist. I think it's most likely true, but I'm not 100% sure and I don't know it's an absolute fact. Um, and if I would say to you, you have a past life, right? I would feel like I'm being a little mis misleading. I would say something like, it's very likely you have a past life. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, and I think I also want to mention how Scientology actually is a religion and how it's different to the other self-help things and other religions and other practices. Like, yes, Scientology is very different to the other religions, very different. I remember one guy said to me once, the Church of Scientology were offering courses in how to run a business or whatever, and some other guy who didn't know anything about Scientology, he was like in a shop, he said to me once, he was like, what the hell, it's a church. Why the hell are they teaching people how to run a business? Like, what the hell, what does that have to do with anything? Like, how is that a religion? And it's just like, yeah, I know it's totally different. Okay, I know Scientology is so different. And it has stuff where you, you, you learn how to run a business in it. Like, that's, but it's just information to help you and stuff. And I know it's so different, but it is a religion. And it's a religion because you can get married there. You can do funerals in Scientology places. It, 
transforms your whole life. It's a whole mode of thinking. It's a whole philosophical belief. It's something completely different. It's not just self-help courses. At the start of it, when I first got into it, I thought, these are just books of good information and self-help courses. But then as you get into it and you realize how deep it is and how much more information there is, you're like, whoa, no, this is a whole transformation of a person. And it's a, it's a, it's a religion. Like This is a religion, without a doubt. Because I know some of those stupid skeptics, if they're listening to this video, um, like the Scientology haters, they say stuff like, Scientology isn't religion, it's a business. And it's just like, yeah, they sell courses, right? But it's, it's a religion. It is a religion. It's absolutely my religion. That's why I got this cross here. It means something to me. When I have kids, I want them to be involved. I want them to be brought up in a Scientology place. I want them to have that as part of their culture and part of their beliefs and then their knowingness and stuff because um, it's excellent and it improves them and it's a good group dynamic. Not involved with the church, of course, because the church got corrupted, long story. Um, but anyway, it's, to me, also, it's something that I'm willing to fight for and volunteer for. And I think if it was just a self-help thing, like some of these other things, there's there's heaps of different cool stuff you can do, like remote viewing, and you can do brain entrainment, and you sit in front of a machine, and it flashes lights, and it wakes up a part of your pineal gland, and you go into like a meditation state, like a deep state, and you have realizations and stuff. There's all these cool, there's tons of them. I dive into all of them. They're great. But none of them are, like barely any of them are religions. Like Avatar might be considered a religion because it sort of came, well, actually, I would call Avatar a religion because it came from Scientology, and it is kind of life-transforming and stuff. It's very gray area, that. But anyway, um, but so many of these things like yoga, all this sort of stuff, they're not religions. But Scientology is my religion, you know what I mean? And that's me, it's number one, it's something I'm willing to actually fight for, you know what I mean? It's something I really believe in. It's something that I think humanity really needs. And all these other things are just fantastic, interesting things that can help you and increase your awareness and, yeah. Because some people, yeah, because some people be like, oh, Scientology, I remember I spoke to someone who was um, like a Jehovah's, like a Mormon or something, and he was like, why did Hubbard call Scientology a religion? He's like, this is just courses to improve you or something like that, but he doesn't, he wasn't a full-on Scientologist. He hadn't done enough courses to actually realize that, no, this is a full-on religion, like this is life-transforming. And I think when you get pe people actually volunteering in something, then it actually moves into being a religion. Because it's like obviously they believe in it or they care about it and they're willing to volunteer or something. It, it sort of becomes a bit more serious. There's another thing as well where some people are so into sport and it's almost like their sport is their religion. And I bet you that person, if they were around 100 years ago, right, when sport wasn't as popular and wasn't pumped around in the media and all that bullshit. Um, and when religion was more popular, they would have been Christians or whatever, and they wouldn't have been as into sport. But then you look and you look at, you knock out their Christianity, right? Because Christianity has knocked out a lot in popularity in the past 50 years. Suddenly they're all into sport and stuff. So it's just, it's replaced their religion. Instead of going to church on Sunday, they go to a local football game with their kid on Sunday. Seriously. I mean, this sport has become their religion. It's where they meet friends and new people and something to talk about and something to strive for to win the premiership. Yay. You know what I mean? Um, so these things, religion is an interesting area because it's like where does something become a religion? And someone could sort of argue that sport for some people is almost like their religion. And I would say, yeah, it sort of is, but it's not really a religion. But Scientology definitely is a religion. And these things like yoga, yoga is not a religion. Remote viewing isn't a religion, you know. They're just cool things to help improve you. Um, anyway, so I think that's all I want to say. These videos are a little bit shorter these days, which is good. Um, so I'll say in conclusion, what was it in conclusion? Um, 
In conclusion, if you're a skeptic, if you're an atheist, actually don't listen to the crap on the internet. Actually try Scientology and look into it because um, it's different. I, I used to pretty much not really believe there was a God before I got into any of this stuff or spirits or afterlife or anything. But Scientology is like almost like a subject of all these unusual paranormal things and it explains a lot of stuff. And you get information maybe about ghosts and, and it's not mumbo jumbo crap. It's, it's fact. Ghosts exist. They're actually out there, okay? You know what I mean? It's stuff that should be freaking taught in science class, but it's not. There should be a science class of theta, you know what I mean? Science class of spirits and explaining how spirits work and all that sort of stuff, but, you know, the information's been hidden from us. We're very dumbed down. Anyway, that's it for this knowledge report. I've been your host, Captain Andy and Ultra Space Cowboy, you have been listening to Andy's Knowledge Report. Until next time, take care of yourself and get up that bridge. Some people call me the Space Cowboy. Yeah.